So I can actually go on iTunes and rate us myself. Uh, only five because stars, I, though, please. Oh, I, I would never do anything less than that. <laughs> I would go six stars if it's available. But I'm not. I'm not Dave Meltzer. And this podcast does not originate from Tokyo, Japan. So I can't give anything over five stars if it's not under those conditions. No. So and neither of us are Kenny Omega or the Young Bucks. You know, you know, Dave Meltzer blocked me one time on Twitter. Mm -hmm. That I mean, he can dish it, but he can't take it. So just, and to say that me and Dave Meltzer are on good terms, I mean, I'm on good terms with him. He's he's not on good terms with me. Because he said something stupid one time, and I tried to debate him logically, and he went, click, I'm not going to do it. And I don't blame him because he was wrong, so he just cut it off. What a little wussy. Uh, what exactly was it, do you remember, that you said or that you challenged him on? Okay, I spent a lot of my career in, in, the, the, in, in Memphis. And he came on one day, and he said, oh, that's not even considered wrestlers by – this guy or that guy, he's talked about Luthez or somebody. And I, I'm, I did well there. And I says, you know, that was, why did mid South sell out more times than Madison square garden one year? I mean, it wasn't, it was, and it did ratings. Like they it did a prime time rating on Saturday mornings. So everybody knew who the wrestlers were. Now people don't watch something because they don't like it. They don't buy a ticket if they don't want to see it, and they don't cheer unless they want to do that. It takes energy. But yet he was he was just repeating what he had heard and thought he was like in the know, but he was the farthest thing from it. Now, Tennessee at one time had three different territories. They had one in Memphis, one in Nashville, one in Knoxville, and the only one that was really had a bad rep was the one in Nashville. And that was run by a guy named Newt Goulas and his son. I think you've heard, heard us talk about him before. Was the worst wrestler ever in the world that God ever created was George Goulas and probably Greg Gagne too. But, but what these guys were saying is uh, Nick Goulas didn't pay, which was true. He was notoriously stingy. And you'd have to get on his ass and – not cuss him out, but raise hell, and then he'd pay you more. But you shouldn't have to do that. But he was talking about but, – but when I engaged – let me go back. When I engaged Meltzer, he just – he cut off conversation. Mm. And I'm still blocked today, which I consider that a badge of honor now. So I take a picture of it. Sometimes I post it on my social media. I put it on Facebook, which is under Dutch Mantel. Facebook, I mean, uh, and Twitter, Dirty D Mantel. I post it on there. That's my main social media outlets. So that's where me and Meltzer fell out. Uh, just briefly, you emailed me not too long ago, and you wanted to also bring up, as you did just then, but maybe elaborate on it, that the Mid-South Coliseum sold more tickets than Madison Square Garden in 1982. Yes. Well, somebody told me that. I said, you got to be bullshit, bullshitting me. I mean, Madison Square Garden, 21,000 seats. And Memphis had 11,000 at the most. But in 1982, and this has been substantiated, it sold more tickets in 1982 than Madison Square Garden did. And, you know, the New York metropolitan area is like 10 million people. Memphis metropolitan area is like maybe 500,000. So a big difference in the drawing audience, but Memphis uh, drew so, and I'm gonna say drew, they sold more tickets in 1982. Now that's going back a long way, but even any venue selling more tickets than the number one arena in the world is somewhat of a talking point, I would think. Mm. But, but I think Madison Square Garden only ran 10 times that year. I think something like that. Maybe maybe eight times, but Mid South ran fifty two weeks, so that is probably the disparity in it. But the it, Memphis nineteen eighty two was a hot hot territory. We would fall out in Memphis on Monday nights, be ten thousand, eleven thousand, and it sells out at eleven thousand seven. I think that's what standing room only. That's, that's when the fire department makes them makes them shut it down. 
And Madison Square Garden has a capacity of 21,000. So, and, but I was at Madison Square Garden once when I worked there years ago. They had 5,000 people in that building. He lost money. They had to. Hmm. 5,000 people in that arena looks empty. You know, there's an old saying, you could shoot off a shotgun in the place and not hit anybody. <laughs> that's, how, that's how scattered they were. This is mid-90s, I'm presuming, is it? Uh, uh, mid-90s when I was there the last time. Hmm. Well, not the last time, but time before. This was the uh, um, It was a time Zabakaya. before I was. Yes. It was a time I was there before the last time I was <laughs> You know, and you say, what the hell are you talking about? No, I was, uh, I was Uncle Zebekiah then. And I came back this time with a, a little more of a character, uh, Zeb Coulter. And people still remember, some of them people still remember uh, Uncle Zeb. But I didn't really do anything there because I had two guys, uh, the Blue Brothers, Jacob and Eli. But they never really figured them in much. I mean, they were big, strong the Harris boys, Ron and Don, twins. So, but I think people still remember us from there. And a lot of people really remember Zeb Coulter. Mm. We were still chanting We the People at AEW a couple of weeks ago, weren't they? Uh, yeah, they were, because they still remember that. I don't think they much liked it, but you, you can't do anything about it. Because they had uh, Jack Swagger or Jake Hager now, and Claudio, which was Cesaro back then, they went head up in that battle royal, that two ring battle royal they had, and they faced off and the people looked at it. And the last they remembered it was we the people. So they started that chant, which I'm kind of glad they did because it's kind of uh, validating that they still remembered it. And I still have really great memories of those two guys. And I said, maybe last week or two weeks ago on this very same uh, podcast here, and I think they missed the boat on those guys, big time, because they were big, strong. They had had me as the mouthpiece, but they didn't go with it. Hence, now we're getting into territory now, because that was Vince's idea. And whatever Vince thought was the way it was going to go. Mm -hmm. and because he could hear an idea could be the greatest idea in the world. But if he was in a bad mood or he just didn't like it for some reason, he just said no. And he didn't want it brought up again. So whoever brought it up to him, they, if, if they knew what they were doing, they would not bring that up to him again, unless it was something like Cena or Taker or some of the big guns, they would never bring it up again. So, Booking in WWE, and I've said this before, booking in WWE is like booking for an audience of one. And I think a lot of people have, I think I actually started that saying, and then it kind of caught on the audience of one. You just got to please one guy. It could be terrible. It could be horrible. But the audience of one, if he liked it, he'd go with it. 